Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mensch. Today, I'm in a virtual machine of Windows 10. And a few weeks ago, I made a video saying that Linux Mint was the best Linux distribution for people migrating from Windows 10. Now, yesterday, Linux Mint released a new ISO with improvements and bug fixes. So today, in my Windows machine, well, my Windows virtual machine, I'm gonna download the Linux Mint ISO and show you how to verify it. So, let's get to it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open up Firefox. I'm gonna go here and click that on. And I already have Linux Mint saved as a bookmark, so I'm gonna go here and click it on. And you can see Linux Mint 22.1 was released. You can click on links and go to blog. And January 16th, which was yesterday, Linux Mint 22.1 Zia was released. Now, Linux Mint releases a new ISO twice a year, usually in uh, June or July, and then sometime around Christmas time. Uh, this time, they're kind of late. They were kind of late last year at this time as well. But one thing about the Linux Mint team is they don't put a deadline for releasing new ISOs. They make sure that it's working properly and all the bugs are out of it. So, like I said, this was released yesterday. So Linux Mint has four ISOs. They have an ISO that's based on Debian, and it comes only with the Cinnamon desktop. And then their flagship ISO is based on Ubuntu, and it comes with the Cinnamon desktop as well. But it also, they have another ISO that comes with the Mate desktop and another ISO that comes with the XFCE desktop. So we can click on here, other versions. So the LMDE6 is the one that comes based only on Debian and it comes only with the Cinnamon desktop. But the recommended one is the one that's based on Ubuntu that comes with Cinnamon as well, right? So you click it on. And it's 22.1 Zia. And if we scan down, this is the one I'm going to download. Now, if you have an old computer and you hardly have any RAM, like, and you're down to four gigabytes of RAM, you might want to try the XFCE edition because it's lighter. Or you could try the Mate edition. So I'm going to download the Cinnamon edition and I'm going to click on here and download. So now we're here and it's telling you it's going to be three gigabytes. There's an installation guide. Release announcement, release notes. So what I'm gonna do is scan down and I'm gonna download it from the University of Waterloo Computer Science Club, which is, I don't know, maybe it's 100 kilometers from where I live. So I'm gonna click it on and it's downloading. And it looks like it's downloading kind of slow. <laughs> it's 2.8 gigabytes. Uh, maybe a lot of people are downloading it because it's a brand new release. And one good thing about downloading a brand new release is that when you're finished installing it, you don't have to do too many updates. Now, while it's doing that, I'm going to do this. Now, today, I'm not going to go through an install, and I'm not going to show you how to use it. I'm just going to show you how to verify the ISO, because you don't have to verify the ISO, but it's highly recommended. And... I think a lot of people don't verify the ISOs either because they don't know how to do it or because it's just a hassle and it's extra work. But you should verify the ISO to make sure that it has that it was downloaded with all its integrity and you want to make sure that it's signed by the developers. Now verifying the Linux Mint ISO in Windows 10 is a little more complicated. So I'm going to walk you through that. Okay, and this ISO is downloading kind of slow. I don't know why. But while we're doing that, we're going to do this. So I'm downloading the ISO from the University of Waterloo Science Club. But you don't want to download the signature or the uh, SHA text from the same place. We want to download it right from the Linux Mint website. So now I'm going to scan up right here. And we want to download these two files. But I'm not going to download it the normal way. I'm going to right click and save link as. So the SHA-256 sum text, I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to right click it. 
and I'm going to save link as, and I'm going to save it. And that only takes a second to download. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the second text, the SHA-256 sum text GPG. I'm going to right click it, save link as, and I'm going to click on save. Note these two things download really fast. <laughs> okay. And you can read this here. It tells you anyone can fake an ISO. So you want to make sure it's downloaded with its full integrity and it has a signature from the developers on it. So now I'm going to go to my file manager and I click it on. And this part I'm going to do is not mandatory, but I recommend it doing it this way. I'm going to click on my C drive and I'm going to right click here and go to new. And I'm going to make a new folder. And my folder is going to be called, let's call it Mint. Now I'm going to go back to Downloads. And let's go back to my website because I just want to see if, yes, my ISO is completed. It's 2.8 gigabytes. And these two files only take a second to download. Now I'm going to go back to my uh, file folder. And I'm going to highlight my ISO, which is almost 3 gigs, right? <laughs> And the two text files, I'm going to right click, I'm going to cut them. I don't want to copy them because I don't need them to be there twice, in two different spots, because the ISO is almost three gigs. So I cut them and I'm going to go to my C drive and I'm going to go to my mint folder and I'm going to paste them in. There they are. So these files, you don't have to make a mint folder for them. I'm just doing that myself. I recommend doing it, but you don't have to. But the ISO, and the two texts have to be in the same folder wherever they are. And like I said, all I'm going to do today is verify the ISO. I'm not going to do, go through an install. I'm not going to give you a tour of it or show you how to use it. I'm not going to show you what the new features are or what the new bug fixes are or anything like that. We're just going to verify the ISO in my Windows 10 virtual machine. So now I'm going to go back to my uh, web browser. And I'm going to click on here installation guide let's click it on and i'm going to click on here verify the iso and you know what i think i'm going to make this a little larger so now i'm going to scan down so now i'm on the page where it says to verify your iso image and i'm going to scan down and right here it says if you are using windows follow the tutorial how to verify the iso image on windows so I'm going to click it and here we are, we're at another page <laughs> and we're going to scan down. So step number one, we already did. So now I'm going to go to step two. So we have to install a Windows installer. So we're going to click on this link and we're going to look for this file. Okay, download SIG, the new PG. So let's click it on and let's scan down. And this is the one we want. So I'm going to click this on and it's installing. An installer, it's 5.4 megabytes. Okay, it's downloaded. Now I'm going to go back, and we're just going to scan down a bit more. So I'm going to go back to um, here. I'm going to go to Downloads here. So I'm in my Downloads folder, and I'm going to click on this application we just downloaded. I'm going to right-click it, and I'm going to run as administrator. And I'm going to say yes. Uh, my language is English. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to hit on Next. And hit next. I'm going to hit next. Install. And it's installing this program. So it, when you're verifying a, a Linux ISO in Windows, you have to install this GNU PG program. Now I'm going to hit next again. Setup was completed successfully. I'm going to hit next again. And now I'm going to hit finish. And now I just want to get out of here. And now I got to go back to my C drive. And I'm going to click on Mint. We're going to highlight Mint. I'm going to hold the Shift button and right click it. And then it says Open PowerShell window here. I'm going to click that on and it's opening PowerShell. And PowerShell is kind of like a terminal, it's similar to the Linux terminal. And now I'm going to go back here and I'm just going to follow the instructions. Open PowerShell window here. Okay. So now I am going to copy this, select all. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to ls it, control l to clear the screen, and ls to list your files. It's the same in here as it is in the Linux terminal. Now I'm going to paste that command in, and I'm going to backspace with my arrows. I'm going to leave that SHA-256 there at the end of the line, and 
I'm going to do this. File name, delete file name, and I'm going to type in Linux and tab it. I think I have to take that out. And I'm going to hit enter. See what happens. So verifying an ISO in a Windows machine is more complicated than verifying it in a Linux machine. So for instance, I'm verifying the Linux Mint ISO. If I was verifying a Linux Mint ISO in my Arch Linux machine, it'd be a lot easier, less complicated, and a lot faster than doing it in a Windows machine. The hash file completed successfully. So what it did was it pulled out the SHA-256 hash file. It pulled it out of the ISO. So now what I want to do is go into this second one, this 256 sum text, and compare it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here. And this second one, I'm just going to create a copy of it. And I'm going to paste it in. I don't want to ruin the original file. And I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to open it up with Notepad. So these two... The middle one and the bottom one we don't need because they're for MATE and the XFC. And we didn't download those ones. I'm going to delete them. I'm just going to highlight them. So I'm just highlighting them and I'm going to delete them because I don't need them. And then, so this file is the one we downloaded from the Linux Mint website. So now I'm going to take, go back to PowerShell and I'm going to highlight this one. Now this was actually pulled off of the ISO. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna do Control C to copy it. And let's see if it copied it. And I'm gonna go back to my notepad and I'm gonna see if I can paste it in. And there it is, okay? So the first line is the text that we downloaded from the Linux Mint website. The second line was pulled off of the ISO. Now we can see that these lines are exactly the same. And you can look at it slowly, and it's the same. So we've half verified the ISO. What this means is that the ISO was downloaded with its full integrity. Now, if I was verifying the Linux Mint ISO in my Arch Linux system, I have a command that will automatically compare these two lines within a second or two seconds. And it will give OK or not OK as the result. But I don't know how to do that command in uh, Windows. There might be a, a way to do it, but I don't know how to do it. But here I'm just doing it manually. So you can delete this or save this. We could save it, I guess. We don't really have to. So now we have to verify the signature. So now I'm going to go back to the website and just follow the instructions. So now we want to do an authenticity check. We have to copy and paste this line and hit enter. So let's just copy it. Let's enter it into the terminal. Oops, let's see what happens. Let's copy. Let's go back to our PowerShell and let's enter it in. I'm just gonna do Control V and let's hit enter. Let's see what happens. So it says here, the GPG key, public key, Linux Mint ISO signing key was imported. Now let's go back to uh, Firefox. Now it's saying, Copy and paste this command into the window. Okay, so we're going to copy this one. Let's just select it. Let's right click and copy it. Let's open up this. And let's just do control V to paste it in. And let's hit enter. And there we are. <laughs> we verified our ISO. What does it say? I'm going to highlight this. Good signature from Linux Mint ISO signing key. It's good to go. Now you might be wondering, wait a minute, Mitch. Here it says unknown. That's not good. And look at this one. Look at these two lines. Warning. This key is not certified with a trusted signature. There is no indication that the signature belongs to the owner. <laughs> but wait a minute. It says up here that it's a good signature. So what's going on? So now we're going to go back to Firefox. And I'm going to go back to this tab up here. And I'm going to go back to the installation guide. So now I'm going to go click on verify your ISO and I'm going to scan right down to the bottom. And look what it says here. It says, note, GPG might warn you that the Linux Mint signature is not trusted by your computer. This is expected and perfectly normal. And it even tells you here, it's going to give you an output where it says unknown Linux Mint ISO signing key root at linuxmint.com. So let's go back to PowerShell 
So we can see it's a good signature from Linux Mint ISO and it's good to go. Now, just to reiterate, it tells you right here on the Linux Mint website, verify your ISO image. It is important to verify the integrity and authenticity of your ISO image. The integrity confirms that your ISO image was properly downloaded and that your local file is an exact copy of the file present on the download servers. An error during download could result in a corrupted file and trigger random issues during the installation. The authenticity check confirms that the ISO image you downloaded was signed by the Linux Mint and thus that it isn't a modified or malicious copy made by somebody else. And that's it. In this video, I showed you how to download the Linux Mint ISO and how to verify it within your Windows 10 machine. And the same would be for Windows 11. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I am the Lennox Mitch.